Good morning, my name is Tom. I will be presenting on my master's re research. My topic is titled Recharge Studies in the Lower Burdekin Using Isotopes, Chloride Mass Balance and Water Table Fluctuations. The objective is to estimate groundwater recharge using various methods. The, the rate and how much water reaches the aquifer. So what is recharge? Uh, recharge is the vertical downward movement of water replenishing an aquifer. So the water traveling through the pores of sediments and the cracks and fractures of rocks down to the water table. Why do we need to know? We need to improve our hydrogeological understanding of the project location. Uh, we need realistic values for input into groundwater models to get realistic outputs. And we also need to improve our groundwater management within the Burdekin Delta, um, specifically regarding recharge. Uh, the project location is in far north Queensland, Australia. I use the laser pointer to show the location. Queensland, sea, coral sea with the Great Barrier Reef. And here we have an inland mountain chain. And uh, so the project focuses on recharge in a delta. And here is the delta in the bright colours. And um, Lake Dalrymple, which is the primary source of the Burdekin River flowing north in the inset map flowing north here. And so a delta is um, the erosion, transport and deposition of sediments. They're eroded from the mountain chain. They're transported by the river and floods and deposited into the sea. And over time, this river has migrated and moved within the confines of the delta area. And um, floods also move the sediments. The sediments are predominantly sand and gravel, less than 1 mil to 63 mil. Um, gravel and along the uh, edge uh, marine muds and um, uh, as the sediment uh, as the sediment is transported by the river um, it can be sorted and, and unsorted um, think of a pebbly sandy beach this location just here north of the Burdekin River mouth is in this inset image and um, you can see all the channel bars of sand and gravel and, and the different um, bar islands the other uh, key feature of this, um, of this figure, so the, the grey that you can see in here is uh, sugarcane irrigation. And the image just down on the bottom right um, shows the sugarcane irrigation furrows, uh, which are important because uh, in the ditches you can see all of the water from in the furrows and the plants grow on the mounds. So putting this all together um, in a 3D block model, this is a hydrogeological conceptual model. And um, I'll use the laser pointer once again to talk through it. So here we have the inland mountains, the Birkin River running down to the sea. And now we can introduce the sources of recharge which this study is focusing on. So they're all the black downward arrows. There's artificial recharge, which is schemes where they're basically soaking water back into the ground. Channel leakage from all of the irrigation channels. Um, you can have recharge from surface water. You can have recharge from flooding, natural recharge. You can have recharge from deep drainage, which is the irrigation fire as I showed before. And then um, recharge from rainfall. And here we have the water table. So this is where the ground, the, the, the water recharging is percolating down through the sediments and recharging the aquifer. Um, this uh, image is um, also shows some of the groundwater issues. In uh, some locations, the water table is so shallow that as it comes to the surface, um, it evaporates and leaves behind salt salinization degrading land quality there's also so the water level is so shallow that the ground is boggy and not very it's degraded as well we also have um, other issues where there's been such heavy pumping of the aquifers um, you have have an upconing of the deeper more saline water from the lower aquifer and also an intrusion of the sea so 
Here we have uh, a sand and gravel of an upper alluvial aquifer. We have a discontinuous clay layer, which separates the two through which water doesn't flow very well, except for in the holes uh, where it's not present. And then we've got a, a, a lower alluvial sand and gravel aquifer with poorer quality water. So as you can see that there, there are issues where um, it's too much recharge and other locations too little and there's lots of uh, man-made effects. There are various uh, methods to estimate groundwater recharge. Uh, three have been chosen for this study. They are water table fluctuation, chloride mass balance, isotopes and traces. They have uh, applicability to this study for the um, tropical climate and also the type of aquifer unconfined um, and with the laser pen. I will show water table fluctuation, chloride mass balance and tracer. They all have their assumptions and limitations and hopefully all the ranges coincide and we have a stronger confidence in the recharge value using the three methods. So the water table fluctuation method um, looks at the groundwater level change over time which is shown in this image, uh, hydrographs, um, x equals time, y equals height, and, and this little image mimics that. Here we have the rainfall and um, irrigation, the recharge, the water percolating down through the unsaturated zone, the capillary zone, and into the saturated aquifer. So over time, the water level rises, falls, and rises, and falls. If you extrapolate the over time the discharge down and just as the water level starts to rise, be extrapolated to the rise in height um, over the time. So you have specific yield. This little equation down here, you have recharge equals specific yield, the amount of water released from the aquifer from within the sediments um, times height divided over the time will give you a length per time estimate of recharge. The chloride mass balance um, is using chloride. Uh, it is stable and yet highly soluble, dissolves in water. The, it's a mass balance um, and the source of the chloride is the sea, it blows the salt in, lands on the land surface and it's basically flushed down with recharge. Essentially, if you know the atmospheric chloride, the chloride concentration in the ground at different depths, and you know the rainfall, the last variable is the amount of recharge, which is shown in this equation down here. Chloride concentration, rainfall, times rainfall, equals chloride concentration of the recharge. What is the recharge? The last variable, rearrange the equation. The last method is isotopes and traces. Uh, traces is a detectable substance and you're basically um, detecting it at locations over time to give you a rate. You can times that by um, porosity to give you the flux, the recharge rate and length of time. Um, isotopes can be used. Isotopes are atomic elements uh, which have a different mass number. Oxygen 18 is um, in water and it's basically um, it's also one of the traces which can be used to identify um, locations of recharge and trends, you know, where is the groundwater coming from. So um, here we have a little man too releasing his tracer. It gets here day one, it could get here day two, here day three, here day four, and he's tracing it down. So we're basically looking at proxies of the water traveling through this recharge, the downward vertical movement of water recharging the aquifer. Uh, this presentation demonstrates the project objective, location, hydrogeology, um, groundwater issues and um, the need to undertake an estimate of groundwater recharge. Um, I've also elaborated on the three methods which are going to be used in the research. Uh, is there any questions?